Hello and welcome to Ag PhD. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. Well, on today's show, we're going to talk a little about nematodes in corn. There's a whole bunch of advertising out there that's trying to tell you that you probably have a major problem with this. Do you really? We want to discuss that today. Now, one thing you do have an issue with on your farm, at least in certain parts of the farm, is probably zinc. It's one of those important nutrients that does get talked about a little bit, but we're going to talk about how to make zinc work for you. We've got an interesting Weed of the Week coming up later in the show, but first, here's this week's Farm Basics. Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. During our Farm Basics time today, we're going to talk just a little about something we don't usually talk about, grain marketing. No, we get so many questions about grain marketing really all throughout the season of, hey, how about this and how about this strategy and when's a good time to market and all that. Wow, I wish we knew when the exact right time was to market, but what we yep. do know is that having a plan for your crop and how you're going to handle it is a great thing. So just this year, we launched Grain PhD to try to provide better information in terms of, okay, we got the agronomic side with Ag PhD. We want to take a look at grain marketing and that side of things. Well, what things do you need to know? What should you learn about when it comes to grain marketing? That's really what Grain PhD is all about. Well, and understanding all the things going on, and it's, it's interesting as you talk with people about marketing, you can see there's a wide variance of knowledge on just easy terms like puts and calls. What do they actually do? And you know, when should I potentially use a futures market contract versus when would be a good time to just deal on a cash basis with a local buyer? Well, what we encourage you to do is go to grainphd.com if you're looking for marketing information. Or let's say you're a non-farmer and you just wanna learn a little bit more about this stuff that farmers are talking about all the time, grain marketing, what does that all entail? What is the Chicago Board of Trade? What is a put or a call or some of these different strategies that you can use on the farm to do grain marketing? This is a really big thing. If the farmer does a great job with grain marketing, he can have a lot more profit, obviously. And the challenge with this whole thing is every single day it changes. It's not gonna be the same two days in a row, hardly ever. Well, the big thing is just you need to manage your risk. You need to understand what risk there is and then understand all these tools that you have available at your disposal whenever you need them. And if you say, hey, here's a great time, I need some cash, I gotta sell some grain, uh, and the price isn't too bad, but I do think there's potential it's going up, there are ways to get back in that market and it doesn't have to take a lot of risk on for your farm or cost you a lot of money. So once again, over the years, Hopefully we've given you some good agronomic information and now we're also trying to provide some better marketing information as well at Grain PhD. Well, one thing we'll always talk about here on Ag PhD is controlling our weed of the week. Can you identify this week's weed? And now we have Jenny in the field talking with Farmer Dave. Thanks Don. Dave, you're mid-harvest. What are you seeing from the combine? Are you happy with your choice of agroliquid fertilizers? I like what I'm seeing. The weather didn't help much this year and we didn't get the rain when we needed it, but my yields are good and the test weights remain high. It helps that my agri-liquid fed crops are consistent across the field. So what are you thinking for next year? I'll be sticking with my agri-liquid team. Back to you, Don. Let's face it, Joe. Some of these guys aren't easy to play. Biologicals are expensive. Humates and plant growth regulators are messy. Yeah, but agro-liquid has four new players that have really eliminated those problems. The Primer Go line has helped their team realize the benefits. Wait, so season-long nutrition and optimized yields while creating a biologically active soil? That's right. Primer Go line is a fantastic addition to AgroLiquid's stellar team. Leading the charge in strip tillage for more than a decade, the Soil Warrior brings the future to your farm today. Ooh. 
In life, when you put the max in, you get the max out. It's no different for your corn, which is why 40 years of effort have gone into proving that Instinct and Anserve nitrogen stabilizers do more than just stabilize nitrogen. They maximize nitrogen. So your corn gives you the max in return. The Guardian Air Twin Spray Nozzle from Hypro produces a twin spray pattern with air inducted droplets for superior coverage, even in dense canopies. Be effective and efficient with your spray application this season with the Guardian Air Twin. Hypro, helping you spray better. Introducing the Soil Max ZD48, the newest addition to the Soil Max Gold Digger lineup. The first plow designed for smaller class tractors, the ZD48 has been tested on tractors weighing between 10,000 and 16,000 pounds with excellent results. Designed for row crop farms, vineyards, irrigation, and specialty crop farms. The Soil Max ZD48 will install tile up to 48 inches deep as well as install 3 or 4 inch tile. The ZD48 truly opens up the world of tile installation to more farms than ever before. Over the last few years, Darren and I have spent a lot of time talking to really high yield farmers from all around the world. And yes, we have a lot of discussion about seed and seed placement, planting, uh, even weed control, disease control, those types of things. But fertility has really been at the top of the list. In fact, it's probably 80 or 90 percent of these conversations. It's been about fertilizer and not just NP and K. A lot about micronutrients. I would say more so about secondary and micronutrients than about N, P, and K. Yep. When you think about N, P, and K, there's a lot of research done on those and there's a lot of experience. Many farmers run trials on one or more of those three big nutrients every year. So we've got a lot of data out there with those and for the most part, we're doing an okay job managing them. Where we're really falling short and we see it so often at Ag PhD when we get soil samples sent in from across the country and really around the world, I would say 50% of those don't even have micronutrients on right, them. Right, right. So what we're going to talk about today is zinc and how you should manage zinc on your farm. When we think about zinc, how is it commonly used on farms and how should it be used? Well, we see some people putting it on as a seed treatment. Now that's a little bit risky in some cases. Some of the nutrient applications we've put on seed have actually impacted germination in a negative way. But if you find a safe source and, and get it on the seed, there's nothing wrong with that. The problem with putting it on the seed is, number one, you can't vary the rate that you're putting on across the field. So if you've got an area that doesn't need zinc and then you've got other areas that are really short, well, you can't vary it to, to accommodate those things. The other thing is, if you're putting zinc on the seed, you can only put so much on. So some people are getting a false sense of security that, well, I already have it on my seed treatment. I should be good. No, you're not. It's just a very, very small amount of zinc that you're getting out there. So it can be done in the seed. More commonly, we're seeing it done either in the furrow or in a two by two at planting time. And a couple of reasons why we're doing that. One, we're getting it down in the soil. Zinc is one that, that stays put pretty well. It doesn't uh, leach down through soil as quickly as other nutrients do. And it's one that is prone if you do have any erosion for loss and movement within the field because it binds kind of tight to those soil particles. So getting it down in the soil, getting it in close proximity to the root system, both those factors are positive with zinc. All right, a lot of times we'll talk about as a bare minimum kind of level, we want to be two to four parts per million with zinc on a soil test. But the problem with that can be if you have very high levels of phosphorus. So I just look at our own farm. I believe we need to be, to get to the kind of yield levels I want to get to, at least 100 parts per million of available phosphate. Well, a lot of farmers have been now talking about this ratio between zinc and phosphorus, and there is an absolute correlation there. Basically, if you overdo it with phosphorus, in effect, you can create an artificial shortage with zinc. So you have to try to keep those two things in ratio. So roughly, where do we want to be? Well, I would say approximately 8 to 1 to maybe 15 to 1, something like that. So just for simple math, let's use a 10 to 1 ratio. So if I'm going to be at 100 parts per million of available phosphorus, or phosphate, I should say, then what do I want to be at for zinc? Well, now I'm talking 10 parts per million for zinc. Well, what did I just say as a bare minimum, 2 to 4 parts per million for zinc? Now I'm saying I want to be all the way up to 10? That sounds crazy, doesn't it? Well, here's the way you can kind of verify this on your own farm. Start taking a look at plant tissue samples and just find out how much zinc is actually getting into the plant. What we found 
in our operation and a lot of other high yield farmers around the country have found the same thing. Boy, if I have really high phosphorus levels, that two to four parts per million of zinc just isn't cutting it. We're not getting enough into the plant. You've got to get those levels higher. Here's the other thing. The availability of zinc appears to impact other nutrients, uh, most notably manganese. So many of these plant tissue tests Brian's talking about, we not only see zinc being short, but we see manganese being short at the same time. When we get the zinc into the plant, it seems to either pull the manganese with it or make a pathway that manganese gets in because once we get zinc coming in, we see levels of manganese going up. Now on our farm, we've applied other nutrients in higher levels and found more manganese coming available to the plant even though we didn't apply the manganese. So it's pretty interesting what's going on with some of these micronutrients and a lot of it starts with zinc. All right, so what is your course of action here? What should you be doing on your farm? The first thing is soil test. And when you soil test, get a complete soil test. So make sure you are getting zinc levels. Then be taking a look at variable rate fertilizer. What we found with zinc is on eroded side hills or even eroded hilltops to some degree, that's where we have the most deficiency because like Darren said earlier, zinc doesn't really move down in the soil profile. So it's very common for us on our own farm where we have some rolling hills to have terrible deficiencies in the hilltop and especially the side hill, but down in the valley, the zinc isn't too bad. So variable rate makes a whole lot of sense. And then the other thing is, Take a look at doing at least a low rate with your planter, maybe a two by two or something like that. You can use a little bit in furrow, but you gotta be real careful about the rate and the source. And then finally, monitor your plants as you progress through the season. Do plant tissue analysis. You certainly can do some foliar feeding or even possibly side dressing with zinc. So do everything you can to get your zinc levels up in the plant and you should find overall healthier crop and higher yields. One other thing you'll need to improve to get better yields is weed control. We'll show you how to stop our Weed of the Week coming up later in the show. In today's market, growers deserve products that bring true, measurable value to their farm. My name is Wade Barnes and I am the co-founder and CEO of Farmer's Edge. We believe the only way to understand value is to experience it yourself. Try our integrated data solutions with no commitments until May 2018. I know we can make a difference on your farm. Your data is your asset. Own it and use it. N, P, and K. They're critical for a healthy crop. Improve their availability and your yield potential with Quick Roots Microbial Seed Inoculant. Quick Roots technology contains two powerful microbes that can help improve access to key nutrients, and it's available in an easy to apply formulation. Simply mix it directly into your dry planter box and your seeds will be covered. Learn more at MonsantoBioAg.com slash QuickRoots. Introducing the SoilMax ZD48, the newest addition to the SoilMax Gold Digger lineup. The first plow designed for smaller class tractors, the ZD48 has been tested on tractors weighing between 10,000 and 16,000 pounds with excellent results. Designed for row crop farms, vineyards, irrigation, and specialty crop farms. The SoilMax ZD48 will install tile up to 48 inches deep as well as install 3 or 4 inch tile. The ZD48 truly opens up the world of tile installation to more farms than ever before. Being a farmer means securing your land and livelihood for the future. Harvest Solutions from Capello USA have the grit to get you there. Our product lines for corn, sunflowers, and forage are designed for efficiency and longevity, preventing harvest loss while minimizing maintenance and downtime. To do everything you can to advance your farmland to the next generation, call us at 855-CAPELLO or visit us at capellousa.com. Capello USA, Italian craftsmanship, American grit. We love the quality, we love the construction. We're looking forward to working with Morton in the future. They have this down to a science, they know exactly what you want, they know how to make it happen, it's an easy process. I would definitely recommend Morton. From the first time I met the salesman to the last nail that the crew put in, it has been a positive and professional experience. I'm so happy I found Morton because they just make the job so easy. Find the building of your dreams at mortonbuildings.com. Do you have nematodes in your cornfields? Well, if you've been watching some of the advertisements running across the country in various venues, 
you may have heard by now that you might have a nematode problem out in your corn. So we want to talk about nematodes and what you can do to stop them. All right, I got a little story for you here about nematodes, and this goes back over 25 years ago. So when I was in college and right after college, I did a bunch of work for FMC. At the time, FMC was mainly an insecticide company. Their number one product was Furidan. Well, they sent me down into northern Nebraska to spend some time with those people down there, and they were selling one pile of Furidan down there, and I just assumed, coming from South Dakota, it was because of the rootworm issue, a lot of continuous corn. Well, I started talking to farmers, and they go, uh, yeah, we're a little concerned about rootworms, so we're way more concerned about nematodes. We love Furidan because it's an nematicide also. And I thought, what? Nematodes? Really? You have nematodes that bad? Yep, we do. So if we didn't have Furidan, if we didn't have a good nematicide, we would just be getting clobbered on corn yield. So, of course, I started thinking, well, maybe we have a nematode problem on our farm. So we started comparing Counter, for example, is also a nematicide. We started comparing Counter side by side with products like Force and Aztec that really have no ne nematode activity. Well, what we started finding is uh, the Counter was always yielding less. Okay, so if we had a nematode problem, then the Counter should have yielded a lot more than the Force or the Aztec. Well, Force and Aztec are just a little bit better on rootworm. Obviously, our problem was rootworm. It had very little to do with nematodes. Now, that's not to say that you don't have nematodes on your farm. Everybody has nematodes. The question is, are they harmful nematodes? And how bad are they? How thick are they? All right, so obviously a lot has changed in 25 years. You can talk about uh, many different aspects of our farm and how yields have changed and even the insects and weeds that we're fighting, those kinds of things. The, the question is, do you have corn nematodes and do you have the harmful ones? Well, the only way to find out is to do a test. You definitely can take soil tests, send them into labs, and have them determine how many nematodes you've got out there. I think that's a great strategy. If I was considering using the new Nemastrike or using Votivo or the soon to be released Votivo 2.0, or if I was looking at nematodes in other crops as well, I'd wanna know what I got in my field. So just like we test for nutrients, I feel it's a good idea to do some tests for nematodes. Now, uh, if you're out there testing for <laughs> nematodes, where do you pull that sample? That's With right. soil that's samples, we randomly pull throughout the field. With nematode samples, we often want to pull somewhere in that root mass. That way we know where we're at. So is now the best time of year to do it? I don't know about that, but it's the best time we've got between now and spring to go out and do some nematode testing. So it may be something to at least get a baseline for your farm. Okay, so another way to handle this would be to take one variety treated with Nemastrike, for example, or maybe Votivo. Uh, that's a biological nematicide, the Votivo. Nemastrike is chemical and compare that versus the same exact variety without that seed treatment, and then run some strips across your farm. So now you get a whole bunch of testing as opposed to just a little sample here or there. If you haven't done it before, what's to say that it's going to start paying for you now? I, I agree, you can do some strip trials. The other thing you can do is look at the land grant universities in your area and say, what corn nematode trials have you run? Have you done some of this with yep. the new products? Do you have any soil tests that we could see from our area to kind of have an idea if there is a nematode issue? Well, rather than trying Nemastrike that's chemical or Votivo that's a biological, you also could go back to Counter or some other nematicide. Now I would just say this, I don't think any of these products is gonna be perfect and kill every single nematode out in your field, nor would we want them to kill every single nematode out in the field because some are actually beneficial. But all we really care about at the end of the day is, are we gonna get yield gain and enough yield gain to make this pay? So I'm super skeptical that it's going to work everywhere. I'm very enthusiastic about using these products in certain markets, and then it's basically up to you to figure out, hey, is it gonna pay for me or is it not? Well, it's very intriguing, and especially if you're in a continuous corn rotation where you know, hey, I've got a host crop out there every single year, my odds of having more harmful nematodes out there are pretty high. That would be a great place to do one of these trials like you're talking about, Brian, because the yield data is compelling when you see, hey, here's what's happened over a broad area. Now let's see what happens on our local area and especially in these situations like continuous corn that could be a hotbed for these harmful nematodes. Yep, so once again, we're just gonna lay it out here for you. You absolutely have nematodes in your field there are probably some that are harmful. 
The question is how many of those are harmful and that's what you're gonna have to figure out. You can use Darren's method of testing. I'm not a real big believer in that because there's so much variance across fields. What I'd rather have you do if you are worried about this is either run some trials on your farm or have your neighbor or your brother run some trials and find out if in your area these types of things are paying. Well, one thing we definitely know pays is weed control. We'll show you how to stop our Weed of the Week coming up later in the show. The Weed of the Week is brought to you by Dow AgroSciences. Finish the fight against tough weeds with the Enlist Weed Control System. Weeds are tough. But we're tougher with unrivaled weed control. Reduced drift and near zero volatility. So, who's tough now? <laughs> Weed of the Week is compass plant. All right, this is one that I'm sure you've seen this weed, but you thought, well, maybe that's just a Jerusalem artichoke. Maybe it's just a small sunflower, a wild sunflower type plant, but it's really a little different. It's gonna be a real hairy plant up the, the stems, for example. The leaves have deeply divided lobes, and uh, yes, it has that pretty yellow flower on it too. All right, the thing that I find most interesting about this plant and where the name came from, compass, is the leaves will orient themselves north to south to avoid the full brunt of the sun. I, I don't know of any other plant that's exactly like that. Well, if you're out in the wild, that may be one thing that you could, <laughs> could trust if you didn't have a compass. But here's the thing, it's a perennial weed. So trying to get that under control can be tough, and we often see it in roadside areas. Uh, so it's in grassy areas where you want to kill this weed, but you don't want to hurt the grass. Yeah, and what are you going to do? You can certainly go out there with dicamba or 2,4-D. Well, it's a perennial weed. So it's most likely going to take multiple applications for multiple years to completely wipe it out. All right, so if you're in an area where you can use something like a Tordon or a Milestone, I like having those in the mix. Uh, we see a lot of guys going out with products like Grassland that would have the new 240 Choline in with uh, some Tordon or Milestone. That way you've got a combination of that quick burn, but also something a little more long lasting. Yeah, but how good is Milestone gonna be? I'd personally take Tordon over the milestone, that's what I would do. You it's know, a little more broad spectrum. Right, uh, when you do get out into crop ground, it's a perennial weed. It's not Roundup resistant, but you're gonna have to hit it with a decent rate of Roundup to get it fully under control. Well, we don't normally see it in fields that are cultivated, but in no-till ground, it could creep in off the edge. So if you're out there in no-till ground, you've gotta have a great burn down, uh, get a good rate of Roundup out, and do it when the weather is warm enough to get good results. Well, that's it for our Weed of the Week compass plant but stay tuned, Iron Talk is coming up next. Out here, great yield starts with great weed control. That's why I choose the system that makes the difference. The system I put to work, because only I know what it takes out here. Yields what it's all for, but keeping my fields clean all season that's what it's all about. This is my field. There are 6,272,640 square inches in an acre. We count it. Why? Because we designed the TigerMate 255 field cultivator and 2000 series early riser planter to maximize every single one. So when you create the most level seed bed in the industry and target a nickel size area to plant a seed, and never miss. You'll know in high efficiency farming, there's one name to count on, Case IH. Rethink productivity. Learn more at caseih.com slash every inch. And now we have Jenny in the field talking with farmer Dave. Thanks, Don. Dave, you're mid-harvest. What are you seeing from the combine? Are you happy with your choice of agroliquid fertilizers? I like what I'm seeing. The weather didn't help much this year and we didn't get the rain when we needed it, but my yields are good and the test weights remain high. It helps that my agri-liquid fed crops are consistent across the field. 
So what are you thinking for next year? I'll be sticking on my AgriLiquid team. M, P, and K. They're critical for a healthy crop. Improve their availability and your yield potential with QuickRoots Microbial Seed Inoculant. QuickRoots technology contains two powerful microbes that can help improve access to key nutrients, and it's available in an easy to apply formulation. Simply mix it directly into your dry planter box and your seeds will be covered. Learn more at MonsantoBioAg.com slash QuickRoots. Are you looking for an easy way to apply dry powdered products to your stored grain? Do you want to use the applicator recommended by industry leaders for products like Diacon D and other dry powder products? Changing Time CT applicators successfully apply a diversity of products quickly, easily, and accurately. The innovative CT applicators are designed to give you the most accurate application of products such as talc, inoculants, fertilizers, and other dry products. For commercial use or on the farm, you need the applicator industry leaders are using. CT applicators for the changing times. Introducing the SoilMax ZD48, the newest addition to the SoilMax Gold Digger lineup. The first plow designed for smaller class tractors, the ZD48 has been tested on tractors weighing between 10,000 and 16,000 pounds with excellent results. Designed for row crop farms, vineyards, irrigation, and specialty crop farms. The SoilMax ZD48 will install tile up to 48 inches deep as well as install 3 or 4 inch tile. The ZD48 truly opens up the world of tile installation to more farms than ever before. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. The AFS Connect Farm Management System from Case IH connects you and only you to the information you need most from your equipment from anywhere at any time. AFS Connect, only from Case IH. Right now is a critical time to check the health of your engine coolant. I'll give you the steps to take and a few things to think about in today's Iron Talk. The first thing you need to do is visually inspect the coolant color and coolant level in the overflow tank. If everything is fine, you may just need to top off the coolant as needed. Check the freeze point with a refractometer and adjust as needed. Also, pH strips are a handy way to test your coolant condition at any point during the year. Testing for corrosion inhibitors is important too to extend the life of your equipment. Yes, it's a little bit of work to fully check out your coolant, but let's be honest here, you probably do need to change the coolant out. Here's the best way to do it. First, drain the coolant and inspect all hoses and fittings. Then, flush with clean, preferably distilled water. Run your engine for about 15 minutes or so, so the clean water can flush through the system. Then, drain it again and properly dispose. Now you're ready to refill the cooling system with new coolant. Run the engine once more to circulate the new coolant. 15 minutes should get the job done. Then, once the engine cools down, you can use a refractometer and check and adjust the coolant system freeze point. There's a reason why some pieces of equipment and some operators have very few breakdowns or lost time. Just do some simple maintenance and upkeep right now before the weather gets too cold. That's all for today's Iron Talk, and now back to the show. Closed captioning for Ag PhD is sponsored by Norwood Sales. If you're looking to expand your farm's grain handling, you want everything to be fast and efficient. The Quick Belt from Norwood Sales is your all-around grain handling solution. Our conveyor-based system uses an 18-inch belt in a 10-inch tube, which minimizes seed damage while moving more than 10,000 bushels an hour. That's fast enough to fill a semi in six minutes. Plus, our hood is designed to gently direct the flow of grain straight down, keeping your crop in condition. Keep your grain and your farm moving with the Quick Belt from Norwood Sales. That's all the time we've got for today, but before we go, we want to invite you to tune in to the Ag PhD radio show, where we take your live phone calls each weekday on Sirius XM channel 147 at 2 p.m. Central. And don't miss the next Ag PhD TV show. We'll have another Weed of the Week, Farm Basics, Iron Talk, and a whole lot more. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD. Soil is nature's filter to keep contaminants out of our water. As rain falls on soils and seeps down through, the minerals and microbial life in the soil remove and detoxify nutrients as well as inorganic materials. To learn how farmers manage soil and groundwater, visit the Responsible Nutrient Management Foundation at rnmf.org.